Good morning, welcome back to another weekly vlog. It's a busy week this week, full of medical appointments, which is not my favourite kind of week. Um, I've still got this lurgy thing, but it's definitely better than it was. I've got like voice back, which is good. A bit croaky still, but better than it was. Um, the steroids seem to be helping my breathing, so that's good. Um, still coughing a bit, but yeah, hopefully on the road to recovery with that. Um, I have just been down to the doctors to see the nurse, my mum's just taking me to that. Um, basically, ever since having this operation on my right leg, the skin on my right, well, my right foot generally seems to have been, I don't know, just weird. Um, it changes colour and goes all sorts of like, it goes purple and it goes red and it goes white. Um, I got problems with pressure sores on the backs of my heels so I had to have um, pressure cushions which are these lovely things here um, and now I am getting like sore on the tips of my toe and like around the side of my foot um, and we just wanted to get her, um, well my GP wanted me to check out with the nurse whether she thought I needed any kind of more intervention um at the moment she thinks it's kind of okay she's checked like although it's red when you press it it goes white and then it goes back to red again which apparently is a good sign um so we've just got to keep an eye on it she said try to put a plaster on it um for a bit i mean i'll give it a try but i'm not sure how much that's going to help or whether that's just going to cause more pressure on it um but yeah we'll give it a try and see what happens so i've done that home now and I'm going to have a bit of a rest and then have some lunch this evening. Um, I have got my mental health group so I'm going to go along to that um, and yeah that's today. I don't quite know how I'm going to get any editing done this week. I was kind of hoping that I'd get a couple of videos filmed but that's just not going to happen this week. I couldn't do it last week because I had no voice um, and this week I've just got too many medical appointments so I'm going to have to focus on editing and then hopefully on a week when I haven't got so many medical appointments I can get some filming done um, but yeah for now I'm gonna have a bit of a rest have some lunch and then work out what I'm gonna do this afternoon good afternoon since I last spoke to you I have had a little bit of a nap watched a bit of TV and just tried to recover a bit from my um, appointment this morning um, I've had some lunch had a little cuddle with Lenny and I'm back on the sofa now and what am I going to do? I don't know. I've got a lot of emails to go through that I've just been building up like while I was ill and stuff that I've still not got around to going through. Um, I've got some letters that I need to get ready for posting but I need someone here to help me get my envelopes out because I can't get to them. Um, this is what I'm finding frustrating at the moment like with my leg and being on crutches and everything is that I just <laughs> seem to need help with so many things that I can't get to without like injuring myself or falling over or whatever um so it's kind of trying to work out the things that I can do while I'm on my own because my like everyone's out at the moment and then when people are around trying to ask them to do little bits for me then so that I can like do the stuff that I couldn't do before anyway um, I'm sure I've got plenty of stuff I can be getting on with on my laptop and whatnot. I, I did think about going upstairs to start trying to do some editing or to get my blog post up, but I'm tired and I've got my meeting tonight, so I want to make sure that I've kind of got some energy for that. Like, I'm really trying to pace myself. Like, I've never been good at pacing. Um, if you aren't chronically ill, you may not have heard of pacing before, but it's like is what you get taught by pretty much every medical <laughs> professional or specialist. Um, certainly I have anyway, and I know a lot of my kind of chronic illness friends have been kind of had pacing drummed into them, where it's basically like, um, yeah, pacing your activities and trying to make sure that you kind of break things up with rests and that you're not kind of doing too much at once, but that you're not doing like not enough at once. It's kind of trying to find a good balance so that you're not doing this whole like boom and bust cycle which I'm pretty good at doing like I will certainly before my leg anyway I would kind of go a bit crazy like if I felt like not too bad and kind of do a lot of stuff and then you'd end up getting like 
ill after that and then going like right down and not being able to do anything for like days or weeks um and it's just not really sustainable and doesn't make you feel very good but yeah certainly like since my operation I've been finding it even harder because it's just trying to find that balance because I feel so exhausted all the time from I guess just from recovery and my body trying to sort out other stuff um it's just it's harder to find the motivation and the energy to kind of do stuff and not just to like sleep or relax all the time um but like my brain is still working like there's nothing wrong well <laughs> I don't think there's anything wrong with my brain you know it my brain wants to do all these things it's like you know I want to like tidy my office I need to tidy my bedroom I want to get like blog posts done I want to get videos done I want to go out and do all this stuff and like my brain's like doing it all in my head but my body isn't keeping up and that just gets quite frustrating which is uh just yeah that's chronic illness um so yeah, I've gone like right off what I was talking about completely, but basically I'm trying to pace as best as I can, trying to like make sure that I have like quieter times and rest times when I feel like I need them, but also trying to get things done as well. Um, so there's always something that needs doing and it's just a case of doing what I can while I'm on my own and then Hopefully when other people get back, I can get them to help me a bit. I just feel guilty though for asking for help all the time. Even like just for silly things, like for example, I can't get my envelopes for my letters because they're on the floor, like behind the arm of the sofa and I just can't get down there. And it's a, it feels like a really silly little thing that I can't do. Um, but if I have to ask someone for help, it's like, I don't know. I just feel, I don't know what I feel. I just like, I feel guilty for asking for help. Um, ugh, my dad's at the window making the dog bark. Go away! Um, yeah, I feel guilty asking for help, like constantly for all these little things because it just—I feel like it just adds up, and it's putting a lot on the people that are around me. Um, but I'm lucky to have people that want to help me, so I'm just kind of trying to focus on that. Anyway. I've been going on for too long. I am going to get on with something, put something on the TV to keep me awake and, yeah, try and be productive. <laughs>
yeah, I am going to go, even though I don't feel particularly great, but I know that it will be good for my mind, which is what I need at the moment. So, yeah, I'm going to go and get some toast and watch The Simpsons and then head off to my group. Lenny? in my bag. You can't come to hydrotherapy, I'm sorry. You coming out? Good morning, it is just about 10 o'clock and we have arrived at the hospital early. Um, we always leave a lot of time because parking is always really difficult, but actually the queue wasn't too bad and we found a space literally as soon as we got in, so that was quite good. Um, you probably would have seen in my video that I've put before this that um, I was eating my breakfast this morning and I heard this rustling and I had my rucksack on the table ready to kind of come out. And I looked over and like Lenny's little head just popped out. <laughs> I was like, you're not coming with me. Um, and as cute as it was, I did get him out because I was slightly concerned about him weeing in the rucksack. So I don't want that happening. Anyway, we're here. Um, I'm here for my first hydrotherapy session. Um, my mum has brought me along and I'm feeling quite nervous about it at the moment. I've done hydrotherapy before, but not for a specific injury. Like I've had it for like general physio like general body stuff but not for a specific injury so I'm a bit nervous I'm not 100% sure whether I'll be in like on my own or whether there's going to be like a group of people or how it's going to work um they have talked about using a hoist to get me in and out as well because I don't think I'm going to be able to do the steps so yeah it's just a bit unknown at the moment and also like not knowing what the physio is going to be like and how much they're going to push me and how much it's going to hurt and stuff so yeah, a bit nervous, but I will let you know how I get on when I come out. We're just going to start getting ready to go in and hopefully can sort of start getting me changed and stuff. Right, sorry this lighting isn't brilliant. It's really sunny, which is lovely, but not um, that good for filming. <laughs> um, I am out of hydrotherapy now. It was, um, it was all right. It was all right. Um, so like, I went in, mum helped me. She had to put like funny things on her feet to cover her shoes, which looked like little elf shoes which were quite funny um and she helped me like get into my swimming costume which I hadn't really thought about before we got here um about actually getting it on um and I should have probably tried it when we um like on our before we came um but yeah basically I have been wearing like really big knickers since I had my operation because my legs been quite swollen and a swimming costume is obviously a lot more um, tight <laughs> than like big knickers. Like I'd actually bought a, like a size bigger than my normal size for knickers to, just so I could get them on and off because that was what someone told me I should do. Um, so yeah, when I was trying to get my swimming costume on, it was like, I could, I could get it up, but it was like, as I was pulling it up, it was like, I don't know what you call, how you would describe it, like pulling on where my scars are. So I'm like trying to pull this blooming thing off and I'm like, ow! Ow, ow. and I'm like just thinking they can probably hear me in the like pool like because it was just like a curtain around us because we were in the disabled changing bit and there's me just like crying with with pain I'm like oh god this is not a good start so anyway got in my swimming costume put me in a shower chair and then they oh, I had to have like a quick shower before I got in and then they like they hoisted me into the pool which is the first time I've ever been hoisted and it is a weird experience um when my gran lived with us when she had dementia before she died she had a hoist we had a hoist for her because she couldn't walk and move and all that kind of stuff so we had a hoist for her and i always used to like watch them hoist her and kind of think like that can't be that much of a pleasant experience i mean it's it was necessary because that was how 
we were able to you know move her around and move her out of bed and into a chair and all that kind of stuff so it was a necessary thing but I always thought it just she never looked massively happy with it and you know no disrespect to the like um physiotherapist or anything like that they were fine um but it, it is it is a weird experience being hoisted um especially into water um it's i don't know it's because you're kind of just wrapped in this like material and it's kind of between your legs it's not massively comfortable um and yeah you're just literally hanging in the air off this thing like held in material um so yeah it was a bit like oh i'm not i'm not sure about this but it's the only way i can get in the water at the moment so that's kind of just what we've got to do um so yeah they hoisted me into the water and um kind of said hello to the physio that was in there she's actually the physio that i did hydrotherapy years ago at that swimming pool and um it's funny because it's the same person that's like on the little desk where you go in and it was the same physio that was in the water with me so yeah i was like i don't think they remember me because it was a long time ago and they obviously see a lot of people but i recognize them straight away um apparently i'll have a different person on thursday um so she said her colleague will be seeing me on thursday so i don't know who he will be um so yeah, I got in the water and um, they like hoist you into a chair in the water and then she kind of got me out of that and um, kind of asked, she just checked like what it is we were meant to be doing. She said, you know, is it right that the physio has referred you for it for your right leg? And I said, yeah, and I explained about the femoral osteotomy and everything. Um, and so then we started by like holding the bars like there's bars all around the edge of the pool it's lovely and warm as well like that was that was good because trying to find a warm pool is a nightmare like when i used to go swimming before my operation like that pool used to be warm and it's just got colder and colder so yeah this pool was nice and warm um and yeah just started by literally like walking i did side walking first back and forward and then walking just holding on with like one arm they have like um, a disabled toilet with a shower so my mum could come in there with me, she helped me shower and get dried and get dressed and all that kind of stuff. I washed my hair as well, which feels so nice. Um, we were like, because at the moment I've only been managing to wash my hair once a week, which is not ideal. Oh, my arm's getting tired. Um, I'm talking too much. Yeah, I've only been managing to wash my hair like once a week, which is not ideal because it needs doing, like usually I would have done it twice a week and that's kind of okay but i just haven't been able to manage two showers like proper showers a week like i am washing don't worry um <laughs> i do have like a flannel and hot water and soap and all that kind of stuff um but like a proper shower to wash my hair has been once a week so while i do my physio i should be able to get into hair washes a week which is going to be so nice like i don't know unless you've not been able to wash your hair properly um or wash properly you just you know you don't uh, you don't know like how nice it is to just feel clean and god i remember when i came out of hospital and i hadn't been able to like wash and have a shower for like 10 days two weeks it was horrible and the first time i had a shower like it was hard work and i was exhausted but god did i feel so much better so yeah i washed my hair um obviously I don't have hair dryers there or anything so i just towel dried it and shoved it up in a bun we have just stopped off at tesco's my mum just has popped in to get a couple of bits for when noah comes tomorrow um i'm staying in the car because by the time we've got my chair out and everything she could have gone in and come back so didn't bother doing that plus i'm shattered from physio so i'm just having a little rest in the car gonna head home and get some lunch hopefully have time for a little bit of a rest before i have to go down to the doctors again this afternoon for a contraceptive pill check so yeah i'm <laughs> i'm tired these hospitals this week is just full-on hospital 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 um so yeah i'm just kind of anticipating being even more permanently tired anyway i have rambled on for nearly 12 minutes so i'm gonna shut up now and just enjoy the sunshine while i wait for my mum good morning i have really red cheeks again and i don't know why um sorry i didn't talk to you again yesterday after i came out of hydrotherapy um 
which is a bit of a manic day. We got home and David and Emma were here with Maisie, so we had some lunch with them. Um, they went off. I had a quick like half hour rest on the sofa and then my mum had to take me down to the doctors again um, because I had to go and see a nurse for a contraceptive pill check. Um, which kind of felt like a little bit of a waste of their time because I went and because I'd, I'd already had like my blood pressure done last week so I didn't need to like redo that or anything um, I could tell them my weight because I weigh myself at home um, and then because the pill that I normally take which is called Celeste has been stopped like they've stopped manufacturing it um, she couldn't obviously re-prescribe that um, and she's not able to like come up with another pill that has to go through the doctor so yeah I kind of basically went in and she was like okay we don't need to do your blood pressure we don't need to do your weight I can't prescribe you a pill um, I'm gonna have to just pass it on to the doctor so I just felt like I'd kind of wasted their time a little bit she did ask me about like what my thoughts were on like longer term contraceptives so whether I had considered trying something like the coil or the injection or the implant um, and I said that I had thought about it a bit but um, kind of speaking to other people with EDS um, it's just not something that I've really ever wanted to go down um, I've not heard great things about the coil in people generally in people with EDS obviously everybody's different but um, with having sort of very stretchy fragile skin and everything like that having something that's kind of implanted in you kind of I suppose um, you've just got the risks like more risks than normal of it moving of it tearing you of bleeding and all that kind of stuff and I've just heard too many people that have kind of had that um, and also there's been um, research done that suggests that um, progesterone um, like only contraceptives so generally things like the coil the injection the um, implant are not great for people who've got EDS because they make your um, like ligaments and everything more lax um, so people with EDS generally already have very light lax ligaments and stuff so they dislocate and um, like injure themselves and um, this guy called I think he's called Professor Howard Bird did research which basically found that progesterone seems to make that worse so in his opinion those kind of contraceptives wouldn't be the best choice for somebody with EDS obviously you know like I said everybody is different and everyone responds differently to different things and there's going to be some people that are on those who've got EDS and who find them you know absolutely fine and really helpful but for me I'm just not I just I yeah it's not something that I am that bothered about trying to be honest like I've been on the pill for years um I know you're not meant to be on it long term but I've you know it's been cleared with my doctor and she's happy with what we're doing um because the like positives outweigh the negatives um and yeah I've not really ever had many problems on it touch wood so um yeah it got passed over to my doctor and then I got a text from my doctor when I got home to say that she um, is putting me on a new pill called Lizina, Lizina, L-I-Z-I-N-N-A. Basically, she said it's the new Celeste. It's got the same like ingredients and all that kind of stuff. It's just a different name. So she's given me a prescription of that to try, and hopefully, if because it's the same, it won't like be any different and it won't make any cause any problems. Hopefully. Um, the nurse did say to, to talk to my GP about the other like long term contraceptive options so when I see her next I will bring it up but I think I'm sure I've spoken to her before and she was the one that told me to look into the research by um, Professor Bird so um, I'm guessing she will probably say like if it isn't broken don't fix it um, <laughs> because we're doing alright on that front um, so yeah I did that and then came home and fell asleep because I was absolutely shattered after hydrotherapy and everything um, last night well yesterday evening and last night my leg was really painful like my whole knee seized up i couldn't bend my leg at all um and yeah just anything i did I, it was it was agony and i was like the painkillers weren't doing anything for me and 
Um, I was like, why, why am I doing this? Um, <clears throat> but I know that I've got to do the hydrotherapy to hopefully move forward. Um, obviously when I see the, the person on Thursday for hydrotherapy, I will tell them kind of how my knee has been. It's not as bad this morning. It's not quite so seized up as it was yesterday. It is still painful, like quite painful, but I kind of expect that to a certain degree because you're doing stuff with it that you haven't done before. Um, so I will let them know, but I'm guessing it's just going to be a case of pushing, trying to push through it and carry on. Um, so yeah, this morning um, we have got Noah, he came and woke me up this morning. He seems to be in quite a good mood, he's been chatting away and singing and had his like a really good breakfast. Um, we had a little play in the lounge after breakfast, did some, played with the trains and read some stories and he did some banging with his on his workbench. <laughs> he just, he loves, he's got like a little workbench with a hammer and he just loves bashing it. And he'll tell you, he'll come up to you and he'll say, Jenny, put your fingers in your ears. Like, okay, here we go again. Um, and then he does his, his work. That's what he says he does. Um, so we did all that and put him down for a nap. He sang for a little while, but he's gone quiet. Um, well, I went quite, quite a while ago. So while he is sleeping, I'm trying to get a bit of editing done because I just don't know when I'm going to get stuff done this week. It's just too busy with medical stuff. Um, so I'm going to try and get what I can done while he's sleeping now. Um, and then when we get him up, I'll have lunch with him. He will then go out to his toddler group um, and I am going to have a rest while he's out, possibly have a little nap while he's out, because I've then got um, a physio appointment for my back at five o'clock. So I want to make sure that I've kind of got the energy to do that. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for today. Only one medical appointment, thankfully. Um, but yeah, it's still, it is literally every day this week. It's a medical appointment. Really not good planning, but there we go. For a they are certain of what awaits them when it all ends But I don't know what will happen to me Will I be remembered in a century Or will I be forgotten like Right, um, I did a bit of editing this morning and I've also cleared a memory card um, so I've got some more space to film which is always good um, No, I didn't sleep for very long at all really um, like half an hour 45 minutes if that which is quite short for him so he's going to be tired um but he woke up happy he was like chatting away and then he was like asking me to come and open the door which i couldn't hear but they could hear it downstairs on the monitor so um rosie went up and got him up and he came in the office with me with and rosie for a bit while i just finished um emptying the memory card and he was like going <laughs> going through my office and he was like jenny mess mess I was like, yes, Noah, it's messy, I know. He's very judgmental. Um, he's so funny. Um, and he was like finding all sorts of bits in my office and asking about them. And he found um, a Christmas decoration. And I said, oh, that's for the Christmas tree next time. And he was like, Christmas is gone. And I was like, yeah, it's not, it's not gonna be Christmas for a while. I said, it's got to be your birthday first. Um, so now he thinks it's his birthday. So he's going around telling everybody that it's his birthday. And so he said, what do you do on your birthday? And he was like, eat. So he's got the right idea about birthdays. But um, yeah, apologies to Richard and Lisa because no one now seems to think that it's his birthday. Um, but yeah, we've just been having lunch and he's just full of like <laughs> great lines today. Um, like my dad called up earlier and he was like, no, are you gonna come down for lunch? And he went, hmm, not yet. And then when we got down, um, what else did he do? trying to think what else he wants oh he we were talking about like getting him ready to go to his toddler group <clears throat> and he started getting like upset and we were like what's the matter and he was like i want to ride in daddy's ambulance instead and we were like hmm i don't think you do <laughs> he's been in daddy's ambulance once and um i just think he loves the idea of going in daddy's ambulance so we were like you can't go in daddy's ambulance because that would mean you were poorly so just go to toddler group instead um but yeah, he's just, he's just being hilarious as usual. Um, so he, yeah, we've had lunch. He's gone off to a toddler group now and I am going to crash out on the sofa for a bit. So Noah is back from his toddler group 
and we're just having some snuggles on the sofa and watching a bit of Peppa because yeah, he's a bit tired. He didn't, well, he didn't sleep very well this morning and he's had a busy afternoon at toddler group so we're having a little a little bit of chill out time watching some pepper found a few episodes that we haven't watched yet so we've been watching those um i am gonna have to get ready to go out shortly because i've got physio for my back um and i think noah's just gonna have a little play at home with nanny and then he's gonna start getting his dinner aren't you you're gonna start having your dinner Pepper's on, he's not going to talk. Um, so yeah, I would quite like to stay here to be honest, nice and snuggly on the sofa, but... Oh, is it Mummy Pig's birthday? Is it your birthday? Yes. Is it? Oh! Hang on a minute. Whose birthday is it? No are you sure? No, it's not. Whose birthday is it? Daddy Pig. It's Daddy Pig's birthday. Let's play this one. We'll play this one. We'll play what one? I don't know why. It's what called one? Peppa Pig Valentine's Day Special. What one? And it's been nothing about Valentine's Day, what, has it? What one? Oh. What do you do on your birthday? This one. Yeah, I'll play it in a minute. What do you do on your birthday? I eat it. You eat? What do you eat on your birthday? Hmm. Do you eat birthday cake? Hmm. Yeah? Yeah. And do you blow out the candles? Yeah. And do you get nice presents? Yeah. Yeah, and do you know what? It's Nanny's birthday next week. It's Nanny. I think Nanny might be in the kitchen. Do you think we need to get Nanny a birthday present? Yeah. What do you think she might like? What do you think Nanny might like? Do you think she might like some flowers? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Nanny likes flowers, what, doesn't she? Do I like her? And do you think we need to get Nanny a card? And should we get Nanny a birthday cake? Yeah. I think you're going to be away next week, so you're not going to be able to come over. You'll have to do birthday cake when you come back. Where is this one? You want to watch Pepper again? Which one? Which one? What one? <laughs> He's what? telling me which one he wants to watch, but he just, he just points. That one. Which one is it? Which which one? What's it got on it? What one? <laughs> okay, let me have a look. We'll see if we can find it. I need to go and get my shoes on. I've got to go out. Are you going to play with Nanny for a while? Stay at home, stay at home with Nanny while Jenny goes for her doctor's appointment. No, Jenny's here now. Jenny's here now, I am, yeah. But Jenny's got to go out because I've got to go to a doctor's appointment. Here now. Pardon? Here now. Yeah, I'm here now, but I've got to go out. Here now. But I've got to go out. Here now. Can I go out? Here now. I am. I know. I'm here now. Am I allowed to go out? Here now. Here now. Here now what? Do I wish to be here now? You, does that mean you want to watch Peppa? Is that what you're trying to tell which me? Which one? Let's watch this one. Come on then. I'm going to go and get my shoes on and you can watch this last bit of Peppa and then I think we'll have to do some playing. Yeah? Play the trains? Which one? Come on then. <laughs> Good morning. It's Thursday and we're back at the hospital again. Um, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> um, I've got another hydrotherapy session this morning. So um, my dad went to pick Noah up and then we all had breakfast. He's now playing, Noah's now playing at home with my dad. Um, and my mum has brought me back over to the hospital. Um, didn't find his face as easily this time. We've been around the car park, I don't know how many times, um, like going round and round trying to find his face and then went round just the last time and there were like three disabled faces. So yeah, that was quite useful. Um, but yeah, we are sat in the car park. Um, not actually that early anymore by the time we've got my chair out and stuff, are we? 
10. Quarter past 10, I've got to be in the water at 11. So I think we're going to start getting my chair out and head over because I need to go to the loo anyway. Um, and then I'm going to go to hydrotherapy. I'll be honest, I'm not massively looking forward to it. One, because my leg hurts so much after last time. And two, because I'm just tired. I'm exhausted. And just the whole like getting into my swimming costume and then changing back again afterwards just wears me out. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Um, but anyway, I shall try and make the most of it. And then I haven't got anything on for the rest of today. So just going to be looking after Noah. So that's the plan for today. Right, I'm out of hydrotherapy and back in the Tesco car park again because mum is just popping in to get something. Um, it just makes sense because it's on the way home and yeah, might as well do it. Um, I had a different person for hydrotherapy this week, so this, uh, this today, today, I don't know where I am. Um, yeah, I had a different person. This one was a guy, quite youngish guy, um, quite good looking guy. Um, who was very very nice <laughs> um which was i don't know just makes it slightly awkward when you have like a really good looking guy that's trying to do hydrotherapy with you and you're like i'm sitting here in my swimming costume looking not my best um but no he was really really nice um they hoisted me in again um and then i did a couple of like some of the exercises that I did on Tuesday, we did again, but we also did some different ones. So, so yeah, we did a little bit longer this um, today. I keep saying this week, but I forget I've done two a week. Um, did a little bit longer today, washed my hair again afterwards. I need to give it a brush because I haven't got a brush with me, so it looks awful. Um, and yeah, knee is quite painful now. Um, when I saw my physio yesterday, the back physio, he said, when you've done the hydrotherapy, like slather your knee in um, ibuprofen gel and also maybe put some ice on it. So I might try that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of frustrating because like my knee isn't really meant to be the problem. <laughs> um, it's meant to be like my my femur, my leg, my like thigh and stuff, um, which is, like a problem it's painful and it hurts when i try and do like weight bearing and all that kind of stuff but i would say at the moment my knee is more of a problem than my actual like break um which is slightly frustrating but i think it's just because the um because of the way like they've moved the top of my leg the bottom of my legs now not properly aligned and the knee is obviously not sitting how it used to and so it's just not happy um and i was talking to my mum about this like on well, as we were driving back because she she kind of said how much is your knee actually gonna improve without surgery and i was kind of thinking the same thing that's that for another week um two down four sessions to go Mum has just popped into Tesco's, like I said. I think she's only getting like two things. Um, and then we're going to head home, and I'm guessing Noah will probably be awake. So we'll probably get some lunch. Um, and then I don't know what we're going to do this afternoon. We wanted to take him out, but the weather's been really on and off. Like it poured down with rain earlier. It's not raining at the moment. Um, but I don't know what it's going to do this afternoon. So it just depends. Um, and also, I'm quite tired from hydro so I don't know if I have got the energy to actually like go out somewhere um so I think my dad may take him just for a little walk like in the woods or something which would be really helpful because I could have a bit of a rest um and then he's coming back and we're doing dinner again for him tonight so that would be ideal I mean I'd love to go out with him but I just I need to pace myself and like preserve some energy so yeah I think that's possibly what will happen but we shall see what the weather does. We're just having, well, we're just finishing our lunch, aren't we? Ooh. Yeah. Noah's had a good lunch. He had a picnic plate. <coughs> oh, did you not like the picnic plate? I think you liked it because you ate it all up. Didn't you? What was on your picnic plate? <coughs> Sneezing. <laughs> Did you have sausages? 
Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. Lots of sausages. Did you have melty sticks? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy in my tummy. Yummy in my tummy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you have some sweet corn? I think you did. Ah, down on. And on that farm he had a Noah. E I E I E I with a. What does Noah say? No. What does Noah say? No. No, 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 it says lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of things. Doesn't Noah say silly things? <laughs> with a blah blah blah. And a blah blah blah. Oh. What about with a munch munch here and a munch munch there? Here a munch, there a munch, everywhere a munch munch. That's Noah eating his lunch. <laughs> Old MacDonald had a farm. What comes next? <laughs> what comes next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. Shall we sing? Do you want to sing Hot Cross Buns? Mm. How does it start? Start. How do we start Hot Cross Buns? Does it go hot cross buns? You do it? No, I can't. You can't? Why? Because. 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 Is it a funny word? Well, I don't think we've actually got really much of it left in here. It seems to have been eaten all up. Hey, you got yogurt on my finger! <laughs> what am I meant to do with that? Lick it off, Jimmy. Yeah. 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 Mmm, we're gone. Again. Oh god. Do it again. Hang on. Let's just get this bit out. Afternoon. I thought you were going to go out for a walk with Grandpa. Mm. Do you want to go out in the woods? No. 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 Can't. Why can't you? Grandpa's falling asleep. No. Well, don't say it. Are you going to put your wellies on and a coat and go out in the woods? Sibbling. Are they? Oh yeah, you be careful on the steps, but Grandpa can help you get up the steps. They might be a bit slippery, but that's okay. Grandpa can help you. And then you can go and crunch in the leaves. Oh, oh. Or, I was going to say, they're not going to be very, they're not going to be very crunchy, but they'll be all squidgy. You can go squelch, squelch, squelch. Yeah, we can wash your hands before you go out, can't we? Oh. I think no one might have to wake Grandpa up, don't they? Oh. Grandpa falling asleep. I would say Grandpa's tired of looking after you this morning, but you were asleep most of the morning, weren't you? Right, shall we get you cleaned up? Good morning, happy Friday. It's actually nearly 20 to 12 so it's getting quite late now um but i have been up since fairly early i had a dentist appointment at nine o'clock this morning um that went fine she checked my teeth they were all good gave them a clean i always think it feels like really weird when you've had your teeth cleaned by the dentist like to begin with because 
I don't know, they obviously do it a lot better than I do and you can feel like the gaps between your teeth and stuff. So I'm like constantly like, my tongue's like going in the gap between my teeth now. Um, so yeah, did that and then came back and had my breakfast. Um, haven't felt particularly well this morning. I've had a really bad stomach. Um, been stuck in the loo for quite a long time. Sorry, too much information there, but um, this is chronic illness for you. Um, yeah, not feeling brilliant um thankfully it is a quieter day today which i need this week has just been manic and obviously i've got to go up to london tomorrow um i think we've worked out how we're going to do it basically we're going to have to drive to a different station that's quite a long well a long quite a long way down the line that we wouldn't normally have to go to but we're going to go there i did speak to some people on twitter and they said that the train company are meant to sort out a taxi for you if um you can't get on the accessible bus but I don't want to be cynical, but I just don't know how far I could trust them to do that. Um, because when I've booked assistance before, it's always a bit hit and miss as to whether anyone actually knows you're there, whether you've booked the assistance, whether you actually get on the train. And so adding in another thing of needing an accessible taxi, I just... I just feel like it's too much of a risk when I'm trying to get up to a hospital appointment. Like if it wasn't going, if it wasn't going up for like something specific, then maybe I would try it. But I just, I need to make sure that I get up there. So yeah, my dad is going to drive us to Woking instead, which is frustrating, but seems to be the only way we're going to do it. So that's how we're going to get up tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I've got a fairly quiet day today. I'm actually going to have a bit of a rest now and just see if I can get myself feeling a little bit better after this morning um, and then after lunch I want to finish editing a video and get that uploading um, and then my mum is going to help me get some bits packed for tomorrow to take up. Um, obviously I don't need a huge amount because I'm only there for one night but I do want to take a few bits just to keep me entertained because obviously I'm going to be stuck in the hospital, can't go anywhere. So I need to take like books and magazines and my iPad and all that kind of stuff. Um, and all of my medications I have to take in their original box, um, or boxes, sorry. So that is going to take up probably most of the room in my case. Um, I just, I can understand why you have to do it, but it's really frustrating when you are, um, when you have like a complex illness and you're on a lot of me different medications, having to take every single one in its original box is really blooming difficult. Um... I have them in a dosset box and it would be so much easier if I could take that but because it's a dosset box that's made by me um they won't let you use it so yeah gonna have to try and squeeze all my medications in and whatever else that I need but yeah I'm gonna have a little little rest now and then try and get on with this editing and packing and all that kind of stuff right I'm not making huge amounts of progress today at the moment <laughs> Um, oh, I've just got a really like fuzzy head, um, so I've actually been asleep all morning since I spoke to you, um, I don't know, I just keep getting these like headaches that like come on quite quickly but are like really painful, um, and the only thing I seem to be able to do is like close my eyes and sleep, um, which is not ideal when you've got stuff you need to be doing. When you're down and you stare at your window, open that Excuse me for looking a mess. Um, oh, I'm not feeling brilliant tonight. I don't know whether I'm getting stressed out about going tomorrow or whether it's like just a reaction from a busy week or whether it's a bit of both. But um, I don't know, I get it sometimes where it, it's not like a headache, but it's like my whole face hurts. Like my jaw is really painful. I don't know whether it's from going to the dentist earlier whether that's made it worse because like I find it hard having my mouth open um but like all my like jaw around here and my neck and like the back of my head hurt um and like my ears and yeah just not feeling not feeling great and I get it like the sides of my mouth start to feel like numb and weird it's really 
really weird feeling but anyway so yeah i've got the tv on and i've just opened a couple of cards which came um a little while ago but they both said that i should wait until today which is the 14th which is valentine's day to open them usually on valentine's day i try and send like little cards to some of my friends just because i think it's nice to send um like a little thing just to say that you appreciate somebody um generally send it just to single friends but occasionally got i send it to friends that are in relationships as well i don't think it really matters that much um this year i just haven't managed to get it done i just haven't I haven't been able to get out to even try and find i did look online to see if i could find any like suitable cards for friends but i couldn't find any and i haven't been able to get out to like card shops to have a little look at cards and stuff so i haven't been able to do it this year but a couple of my friends have been really nice and have sent me something so the first one is this which is from my friend lydia who is also a big disney fan um and it just says have the happiest valentine's day um which i really love so that's made me smile and then my friend lissa has homemade a little card which i'm gonna have to hold up so you can see it better um there we go it's got a little s'more on that she's like drawn herself and it says i need s'more friends like you i mean how cute is that she's really really talented um so i'm not sure if either of them uh, lydia or lissa will be watching this video but if they are i just want to say thank you for those cards because they've made me smile and yeah it's been a hard week this week and opening those cards today has just been yeah nice nice good morning it is quite early i've been up since about quarter past six um just having my medication and all that kind of stuff and packing my last few bits um and then we're gonna head off um driving over to woking and then getting a train up from woking to waterloo um yeah i just want to go back to bed i'm too tired um and also we've got storm dennis coming today so it's meant to be really really rainy and wet and windy and just not how you want it to be when you're trying to get around london um yeah my bags are quite full <laughs> um i don't know what i've got in them um i think it's, a lot of it is like i've got a couple of books and magazines and coloring and things to keep me like entertained and also like all my medication is taking up quite a lot of space um but hopefully hopefully it'll be all right um lenny is just going crazy for his crazy few minutes of the start of the day um but yeah i'm just gonna finish taking my medication i'm gonna have one of those little like porridge pot things on the way um because it's easier and it means i don't have to rush so much um and then we're heading off <laughs> Gotta let the sun shine in the day I'm trying to make this darkness go away I'll paint with colors And I'll sing until my lungs give out I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day And I will leave my windows open So that I can hear the sound of
please excuse my red dots all over my face. Um, I had like bits, uh, like wires stuck to my face and they've left like really sore places, which isn't much fun. Um, also, please excuse the noise in the background. Lenny is going slightly crazy. Um, <laughs> just leaving him do it. Um, so yeah, it's been, I don't know, it's been a strange like 24, 48 hours, however long it's been. Um, so we got up to the, so we went to, it's, the test was at the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery in London. It's like right next to Great Ormond Street. And um, so we got up there at about 11 o'clock yesterday and um, like eventually managed to find the ward. Um, we went like basically you can access the ward from two ends and we accessed it from the wrong end because the other end you could only get to it via a really small lift and I couldn't fit my chair in it so we had to go the other way um, so we couldn't actually get into the ward for quite a while because they were doing um, like sleep tests and they don't want any like noise or anything so we had to wait outside the ward for a while um, but then they let us in and I got shown to my room. I had like a whole like room to myself, which I didn't realise I would have. I thought it would be like kind of like a bay. Um, but I had a, a room and I had my own bathroom, which was really nice. Um, and yeah, my mum and dad like stayed around for a little while um, while I was kind of like checked in and um, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And then um, a... I don't know what they call them, like a some sort of te technology person, I don't know, came, um, I'm sure they have a much more like superior name than that, but you know, um, yeah, this technology person came and um, like fixed all the wires to my head, um, they had to do, well, to begin with they had to like measure my head and then like, mark it with like a red pencil um, and then for each point they have to like exfoliate the skin um, with like this like gritty stuff um, and then they put like a bit of glue onto the wire and then like stick it on um, so it's kind of like having I've had an EEG before and it's like that but they have to put like more sticky glue because the wires have to stay on like longer um, so he did that and that took a long time um, and I was like starting to feel a bit funny like I don't know I think I was just tired and not feeling brilliant um, and I'd had to take my I'd had to take my glasses off and because I couldn't see very well that was making me feel more dizzy and stuff um, but I had my mum and dad there so that was good and then they headed off um, and I had some lunch um, the menu is pretty much the same as when I went in for my leg operation because it's the same um, chain of hospitals um, so I kind of knew which foods I already liked um, so yeah I had some lunch um, and then I was just absolutely shattered so oh no then after lunch the guy came back because he had to attach some more wires to um, like ones to my face and my um, like chest and also my legs um so he did that and then um i'm trying to think how it all went i can't remember how which how it all went um i think actually then a doctor came to see me and did um like a quick examination and just asked a few questions um and then a nurse came and we went through like all my medications and stuff um which took a long time um, they actually let me self-administer my medications, which I was really pleased about because, like, I just, I don't, the one thing I really, well, not the one thing, but one of the things I really struggle with when going into hospital is not being able to have control of my medications because I'm on so much. I know, like, what times I should take them and what works for me. And, obviously, when you're on a ward, you can't necessarily do it exactly how you want to do it because it has to fit in with like the staff and stuff so I was really pleased that I was able to do it myself um so that kind of took a bit of stress away um and then once that was all done I was absolutely shattered so I lay on the bed and 
they started falling asleep and then one of the staff came in and they were like they were like Jenny we're really sorry but you have to stay awake and I was like really <laughs> I was like I can't I really can't I'm too tired so they went off and spoke to someone um because I think they were worried basically that I wouldn't sleep at night and I was like honestly I will sleep at night I just need some sleep um so yeah they then came back and said okay that's fine you can actually you can sleep like an hour and a half so I was like yes thank you um so yeah I had a I had a good old nap um in the afternoon and then when I woke up um I can't remember what I did I just sort of like relaxed I had a tv in the room with Freeview so watched that and um I had some dinner and yeah watched The Masked Singer and just relaxed a bit really and then they kind of said to me what time would you like to go to bed um so I said that I would go to bed at like half 10 which is a lot earlier than I go to bed at home but it's like a time that I really should be trying to get to bed um so I thought I'll make the most of it and go to bed like at a decent time um so then like once I'd like been to the loo and sorted myself out and everything um they came in oh I had by this point I had like a belt around my waist with like a box which was like connected to all my wires um and then that box was then connected to a computer um and then if I wanted to go to the loo I could just disconnect it and go into the loo and then reconnect it again but yeah once I'd done been to the loo and I like, was ready to get into bed and they came and put a little probe on my finger which was going to monitor my oxygen saturation overnight um and yeah then then they let me go to bed and I kind of slept okay like no different really to how I sleep at home um like weird dreams and quite restless but that's kind of my normal night's sleep it was I don't know it was slightly difficult trying to sleep with like all these wires and a big box like attached to me but it I managed um and also all of the time there's like cameras in the room um filming you which is kind of weird because you kind of forget for a bit and then you realize that they're still there and people are watching you like 24 7 um but anyway yeah i slept and then they came to wake me up at half seven um to give me an early breakfast um so i had my breakfast and kind of watched tv for a bit and then today they were doing a I don't know what they call it but it's basically where they want you to they let you have a nap every two hours for 20 minutes um and the first nap was going to be at nine o'clock so um yeah once like I'd had my breakfast and all that kind of stuff they took the probe off my finger um and also took the um like, ele like wires off my legs because they didn't need those anymore um, and then they like came in just before nine and like shut all the blinds and um, made me turn off my phone and everything like that. Um, and then yeah, turned off all the lights and basically said, no, no, see you shortly. Um, and then they just like kind of leave you to it and see if you will sleep. Um, and then they do that every two hours. So like nine, 11, one, three and five. Um, and what I will say is, like, it's just not long enough. I was lit, I was just kind of, just about, like, falling asleep to a point of, like, being properly asleep. And then they'd come in and wake me up again, and I was like, oh, I just want to sleep a bit longer. But there's obviously, like, a reason why they're doing that. Um, so, yeah, kind of spent most of the day doing that, and then in between doing that, um, like, watching TV and reading and um, eating meals and all that kind of stuff. Um... And yeah, it was it was definitely a bit strange. Like it's quite difficult to actually like sleep on demand. Like, I mean, I'm quite good at sleeping, but when someone's make, when someone says to you, right, like now go to sleep, it's like okay. And I started to get really quite like anxious because I was like, oh god, I got I need to try and go to sleep. And then you're like overthinking it too much. Um, but yeah, we did it. So that was that was that. And then uh, like after five after the five o'clock nap. Um, a lady came in and um, was going to like, she removed all the wires. So they use um, basically like this stuff that smells like nail varnish remover. Um, they like rub that on them. And then also it's got like, they use olive oil as well. So 
you've got like the glue in your hair and then you've got this nail varnish remover and then you've got olive oil making it greasy so you probably saw my hair afterwards it was just yeah not nice um so they just connected me from everything um and then said that i could like go and have my shower and stuff which was yeah not easy um i should i stupidly i didn't ask if they had a shower chair and i really should have because at home i don't not use a chair in the shower and i don't know why i thought i could do it there there was nothing to hold on to and um so i was like holding on to like the um like shower like for dear life while i was trying to like wash my hair um and i got to like shampoo my hair and i was like i need to sit down i need i was like crying in the shower because i was like i was in pain and i felt like i was going to pass out um but i really wanted to get it done so yeah i managed to get my hair washed and i was like scrubbing it trying to get the glue out but i'm still finding bits of glue now um which is not not nice but i think hopefully next time i wash it it will feel a lot better um and then like just as i was kind of finishing my shower my dad arrived um so he could help me kind of like get myself dressed properly and sorted and packed and all that kind of stuff um and then it was time to go home and actually my dad had driven up this time because we thought it would be a bit quieter because it was a sunday i mean it wasn't the traffic was crazy and it took us ages to get home and i felt really ill in the car i don't know if it was tiredness travel sickness the fact that i hadn't eaten for quite a while or a mixture of all of those things but i keep getting it at the moment where i feel really like I've got, I get a headache, which I've had most of the day anyway, and I but it gets like worse, and I feel quite like lightheaded and faint, and then I feel really really sick. So I spent like most of the journey home like retching and coughing, thinking I was going to be sick, which my poor dad had to put up with. Um, and I was like really like hot and clammy, so we turned like the heat down to like 17 degrees. I had the window open. My dad was probably shivering, but I was there like just needed I don't know when I feel like sick and like that I just need like cool air and that seems to help um so yeah that wasn't much fun because the journey was quite long and I was just I just spent the whole journey like thinking well nearly being sick um yeah so that wasn't great we got a McDonald's on the way home and I ate some of that and actually I think that's helped a little bit I think I probably was like my blood sugar was low and I wasn't yeah feeling great because i was a bit hungry um and there yeah, that's about it really i'm home um so yeah i think i will do a blog post about it all at some point just to kind of explain what happens and what it's like and all that kind of stuff um i'm hoping that these red marks will go shortly um they're kind of all over my body and um like when they did the ECG yesterday. Oh yeah, they did an ECG yesterday and I managed to break the machine. Um, uh, they, yeah, they did the ECG yesterday and even though the things went on for very long, like they took them off and it had made my skin like red raw. So this is, this is why having EDS is so much fun because it gives you really fragile skin. So yeah, I'm hoping these red marks will go down. They're looking better than they were actually. Um, and then I will go and see the consultant in March, I think, and see if the tests came back showing anything. I don't know whether they will or not. Um, I don't know whether there's going to be any kind of reason why I'm so tired all the time or whether it's just going to be part of my like EDS and POTS and all that kind of stuff. But it'll be interesting to see. Lenny, what are you doing? Um... So yeah, that was my week. I hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog. I'm sorry that it's been a lot of me just talking about medical appointments this week, but it has been a crazy week for medical appointments, unfortunately. Um, yeah, hopefully next week might be a little bit better. Um, so yeah, if you've enjoyed this week's vlog and you'd like to see more from me, please do give me a like and subscribe to my channel. Um, also hit the notification bell that means you'll get notified every time i upload a video so you don't miss anything leave me a comment 
Sorry, this cat is going absolutely mental. Um, <laughs> leave me a comment, let me know what you guys have been up to this week. And also let me know if there's any videos you'd like to see me film. Um, and also if you wanna follow me on social media, I'm usually on like Instagram mainly, but Twitter as well. Um, my links are in the description bar below and I will put them on the screen as well. And yeah, I will see you in another video very soon. Bye.